If I asked you to name the biggest company in Latin America in terms of market value, many of you think of giants like Petrobras, the Brazilian oil company, or America Mobil, the multinational telecommunications company founded by Carlos Slim. You may even think of banks like Brazil's Itaú, or mining corporations like the Brazilian Bali, or the Chilean Coldelco. But unless you follow the LATAM market very closely, or you live there of course, you'll most likely be surprised to hear that it's an e-commerce company that is making the run for first place. And if that didn't surprise you, the more stunning news is that the company in question is also Argentinian. Especially when we see headlines like these. Argentina's economic woes send companies fleeing. Investors fear leftist government's interventionist moves to stabilize struggling economy. The Financial Times. The company that I'm referring to is Mercado Libra, a giant that is listed on the Nasdaq, along with other stock exchanges, and that, at the time of preparing this video, the market values at just over $50 billion. It's something like the Latin American Amazon, although in reality, Mercado Libra is much more like Alibaba, because unlike the North American giant, this South American titan that already operates in 18 countries in the region rarely trades in its own name. Instead, it works as a kind of marketplace that makes available to buyers and sellers all the services they need in exchange for a small commission for each transaction and service provided. Buying and selling, logistics, financial operations, etc, etc. The fact is that with more than 44 million buyers and 11 million sellers, this is by far the largest e-commerce platform in all of Latin America. It's been a huge commercial success, which, as you can imagine, has also become a huge financial success. Mercado Libra shares have been one of the best investments of the last decade. To illustrate that point, if in 2010 you had invested $10,000 in shares in this company, those same shares would be worth almost $160,000 today. That's if that you haven't sold them along the way, of course. An appreciation that is six times higher than the one registered by the S&P 500 total return. That is, even including dividends. And as always, this has made us here at Visual Politic, in collaboration with Value School, ask a few questions. What is behind such an increase? What business model does Mercado Libra have? What are its main strengths and weaknesses? What does the market make of it? Well, as always in this video, we are going to answer all these questions. But first, we have to get to know the business model of the biggest Argentinian company of all time. Listen up. Much more than online shopping. Mercado Libra was not a company founded in a garage, far from it. Its co-founder and president, Marcos Galperin, was studying for a MBA at Stanford University in 1999 when he mapped out this potential business. At that time, Marcos Galperin, besides studying, worked in the financial department of the Argentinian oil company, YPF. But when Repsol took control of that company, he found himself unemployed. It created a kind of now or never situation for him. So Galperin called on his contacts to move his project forward. Even from very early on, it obtained the support of significant investors and entities as prominent as JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and Banco Santander. In October 2001, just two years after its launch, Mercado Libra signed a partnership agreement with eBay, whereby the American company became its largest shareholder, a status they maintained until 2016. But the fact is that since its expansion began, it has been unstoppable, and what began as an e-commerce space, that is, a simple space for buying and selling, has become a whole commercial ecosystem present in 18 different countries. Be specific, this company currently operates with the following six divisions. First, Mercado Libra, which is strictly speaking, the e-commerce market. Then there is Mercado Pago, the fintech service division that deals with digital payment methods. It's roughly equivalent to what Ant Financial, with its Alipay system, is to Alibaba. And take note, because as we will see later on, this division already accounts for most of the company's revenue, and it has even begun to deliver products such as investment funds to its clients. In third place, we find Mercado Envios, which is in charge of logistics services. Fourthly, Mercado Shops, which is the Latin American Shopify, that is to say, it offers software and templates to be able to create and manage online stores. In fifth place, Mercado Libra Publicidad, which manages the online advertising within the platform itself. 
And finally, Mercado Credito, a purely financial arm dedicated to providing cash advances and small loans to sellers and buyers. As you can see, just with Alibaba, this company has gradually extended its activity to new markets. Well, the fact is that with all these lines of business, Mercado Libra achieved a turnover of almost $2.3 billion in 2019, a figure that in 2020 could exceed $3.5 billion. Now, wait a minute, how can a company that had a turnover of just over $2 billion in 2019 and lost almost $200 billion be valued at over $50 billion? What does the market see in this company? Well, let's take a look. The Dream of El Dorado Let's do the numbers. Between Tierra del Fuego at the southernmost tip of South America and the border with the USA lives some 655 million people, almost twice the population of the United States, with an average per capita income similar to that of China. However, despite this, in the Latin American and Caribbean region, e-commerce spending represented only 4.4% of all retail sales in 2019. By comparison, this figure was almost 11% in the United States and more than 20% in China for the same period. We would have to go back at least a decade in North American data to find similar figures to those that Latin America has today in terms of e-commerce. However, what this low figure presents is an opportunity for the future, an opportunity that could drive the growth of the Mercado Libra business for many years to come. And do you know what? That has been precisely what's been happening recently. During the last few years, the growth of e-commerce in Latin America has been very similar to that registered in the rest of the world. Well, the fact is that today, the company featured in this video is by far the leader in all major markets in the region, Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, Chile, and Colombia. So it seems to be in an unbeatable position to take advantage of the upsurge in e-commerce that this region is experiencing. And just remember, we are talking about a market of just over $80 billion in 2020 that is expected to grow by 50% in the next three years alone. At this point, we need to discuss an important issue that those of you who follow visual politic know all too well. Latin America is a difficult region to do business in. Only two of its largest economies, Brazil and Argentina, even rank in the World Bank's Doing Business Index, a ranking that attempts to rank countries according to how easy it is to do business there. Their rankings are 124th and 126th respectively, proof that in this index, Latin America usually rates badly year after year. And not only that, trade in the region has some very unusual characteristics. Barriers to international trade are high. Bureaucracy is suffocating. The vast majority of companies are small and the proportion of transactions in the economy that occur outside of banks is overwhelming. Well, it is precisely in this environment that Mercado Libra has specialized. And that, that is something that could give it a certain competitive advantage. Their knowledge of the local market may be more difficult to replicate than simply copying models from other regions in the world. In other words, if there's one thing that makes this company stand apart, it is precisely its ability to read and adapt to the regional reality. But okay, okay, this is easy to say, and it could just sound like a bunch of hot air. So do you want a concrete example? Well, just check this out. Latin America is a region with many, many peculiarities. For example, although it may be hard to believe, according to existing research today, in 2020, more than 50% of the population does not even have a bank account. And depending on the country, the use of credit card or debit cards is only common amongst 20% to 55% of the population. And of course, it goes without saying that this can be a huge problem when you're trading online. If consumers don't have a bank account or use cards, how on earth are they gonna pay you? That is precisely why in 2004, five years after the company was founded, Mercado Libra created Mercado Pago, its own payment platform. Something like what Alipay is in China. A platform adapted to the local reality that even facilitates cash payments using local locations, such as convenience stores. And take note, because this division of their business was not only a winner for the commercial division, but since the second quarter of 2020, it has contributed most of the revenue of the entire company. Mercado Pago is no longer only in charge of managing payments on the Mercado Libra platform itself, but has made the leap to the outside world, where its growth is, by the way, even more phenomenal. Their off-platform business has grown at an annual rate of 75% over the past five years. Take a look. 
In total, during 2019, this division facilitated more than $28 billion in payments, a figure that in 2020 could increase to around $40 billion. And although Latin America continues to be the region of the world where cash is king, the trend that is happening in the rest of the world is clear. Cash is losing favor to the rest of the options, which are becoming more and more extensive. They have an incredible opportunity to become the company of prepayments in Latin America. Sudarshan Murphy, Senior Analyst and Fund Manager at GQG Partners. This is what explains why, in March 2019, PayPal announced an alliance with an investment of $750 million in the Argentinian company. And pay attention, because in 2020, this company has found even more unexpected wind in its sails. The coronavirus. Yes. Yes, that's right. Mercado Libra has been one of those companies that has benefited the most from the pandemic. Why? Because social distancing measures and fear of contagion have propelled its two main business divisions like a rocket. On a physical level, quarantine, confinements, and other social distancing measures have driven the transition to e-commerce. And on the other hand, fears of contagion have accelerated the decline of handling cash. Thanks to COVID, consumers don't want to touch anything, and that is creating a virtuous circle for us. Michael Maybach, President and CEO of MasterCard. The pandemic generated significant changes in consumer behavior, resulting in a new milestone in the penetration of e-commerce and online payments in the region. Pedro Arndt, Chief Financial Officer, Mercado Libre. And all this is something that naturally has been reflected in Mercado Libre's accounts. The second quarter of 2020 was simply a month of new records. To give you an idea, during this period, the sales facilitated by Mercado Libre grew 102%, and the total value of the payments managed was 142% higher. This is what explains why the stock price has had such positive growth throughout 2020. Now, Hold on a moment, because not everything is so rosy. Yes, the company is growing at a dizzying speed. Of that, there can be no doubt. For example, look at this graph that shows how income has evolved since 2015. However, this graph must be viewed in tandem with this one. As you can see, as revenues have increased, the operating margin has continued to worsen. Why? Well, it's quite simple. Firstly, because in many cases, mainly because it's the cost of shipments, the company sells at a loss. And secondly, because the company is spending a lot of money on marketing and on expanding its capacity. In other words, Mercado Libra is following the trends of the new Silicon Valley and Wall Street, where growth comes first and profits don't matter so much. On the other hand, it should be noted that the company's shares are not exactly cheap. For example, at the time of making this video, Mercado Libra was trading at almost 15 times the value of all its revenue forecasts for 2020, while companies like Amazon or Alibaba are trading at four and seven times those values, respectively. And if instead of looking at the revenue, we look at the EBITDA, which, as you know, is the gross operating profit before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, then this company is trading at a whopping 252 times its EBITDA. 252 times! The market seems to believe that this company is going to grow like crazy over the next few years until it becomes the new Alibaba or the new Amazon. The question is, will it make it? Will it be able to meet its goals in a region as complicated as Latin America? Does it make sense that a company that loses money and has a turnover of just over $3 billion is valued at over $50 billion? We don't know. Only time will tell. However, if one thing has become clear over the last few years, it is that this type of company is an incredible business. But at this point, it's your turn. What do you think of Mercado Libra? Do you think it could be a good investment opportunity? Will it have to face new competitors as Justin Leverins, Invesco's Emerging Markets Investment Manager, suggests? Mercado Libra has no chance of winning the business of Mexico. Amazon is free to operate there because of the free trade agreement. And Walmart has a large presence through Walmex. Justin Leverns. Leave your answer in the comments. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. And also the channel is possible because of Patreon and our patrons on the platform. Please consider joining them and supporting our mission of providing independent political coverage. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.